I hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. So today we got a good one. This was a cool article because I don't think everybody realizes what effect the pandemic had on real estate in general. Right, okay. So when I read this article, and I didn't go through the whole article, we're gonna go through it yeah. as we go. You know, it's interesting. The title says, home prices skyrocketing 40% during the pandemic but Zillow sees them rising less than 2% this year. So, okay, less than 2%. I understand that because things are going back to normal. We just right. did a video on that. Right, yep. But this is more like, does everybody realize how much because of the pandemic and people started working from home, how much because of supply and demand, how much prices went up? 40%. I, I would say, you know what, just gut, I would say, but you guys comment and let us know. I would say that they probably do to an extent because we've been talking about inflation, people being priced out of the homes, things like that over the last couple of videos. So maybe they do, maybe they don't. But like I said, let us know. And but a lot, of people are do, a lot of people are doing videos and saying, okay, prices are going to drop. So I was thinking about it. Okay, even if they drop, let's say those people are right and mm -hmm. they drop. If this is true and prices went up on average 40%. Nationwide, yep. Nationwide. They're never going to, the prices are never going to go back to pre pandemic levels. Right. So the, the drop videos are saying, oh, we're going to go backwards 40% and we're going to have this well, what, some 2006, people, 7, and 8 thing all over again. Yeah. I don't see yeah. prices, prices going there because, A, people don't have that much money to put at the closing table because they're selling their house and they're like, okay, we're, I'm upside down two, three hundred thousand dollars. Right. I don't see that happening, you know? Right. And there's so many other things that contributed to the, you know, 07, 08 deal. Um, predatory lending practices, but we could go on and on. Yeah, about but that. I, it's just I, not I, the same. and I can even see, you know, people, if say prices did drop that much mm -hmm. and people have no equity in the house or they're underwater in the house, that's when I see a lot of people walking away from their houses. Right, that make, but that makes sense. Because they are like, I have to move or nobody's going to buy this house yep. and I'm not bringing $100,000 to the table. Right, because they don't have $100,000. They don't have $100,000. To but, anyways, this is what the video is about. Okay, so do me a favor, if you like this kind of content, consider subscribing and, you know, share the videos and comment. It's greatly appreciated. It's very motivational for us. But go ahead, Bill. Alrighty. Read the first paragraph. Sure. In roughly two years during the pandemic housing boom, home prices rose more than 40% since the home prices continued their upward uh, ascent. Capital economists, for its part, recently said that the national average house price has risen almost 50% since the start of the pandemic. First American yesterday released its home price index report that found house prices nationally are now 52% higher compared to pre-pandemic levels, having increased more than 6% in the last year. I mean, that's that, a mouthful. <laughs> that's a mouthful, but they're going off of data, I'm assuming. Correct, so they're looking at national data, I would assume, it didn't say it, but based off the numbers, more than 40% increase. Yeah. That tells me that's more of a national because we're a little higher here in the Tampa Bay area. Right. So that tells me these are national numbers and then generally these articles speak nationally. Um, so, but I mean, if the, if the Zillow is saying that this year is gonna be 2% growth, it's still 50%. We're still up. We're still up. Right. So that's what I'm just saying is prices can't drop that much because people will be underwater at the houses because people did buy a lot of the houses you know, they were selling like crazy. They were selling without inspections. They were just right. It was there was all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah, it was it, it was crazy market. And if people are losing a hundred, two hundred thousand, according to some of these people in these videos, you know, they're going to walk away from the house. Right. It, sometimes what people see and it does get confusing. I understand that. Um, so when you see like you go on Zillow or any of these other uh, uh, publicly accessible sites, you know, you start to see, oh, price reduction, price reduction, price reduction. So the, that logically that makes sense that you see prices are falling. So well, then you read this article and you're like, well, wait a minute, you're saying prices are gonna be up still. Or just maybe the people are pricing, they're like, all right, we're gonna put it on the market. Let's see what happens. Let's ask for the moon. And then in two weeks, if we don't get any bites, let's lower it then. Right. Or let's accept a lower offer 
to make it feel like they're getting a good deal but really they're getting the jeep right we're gonna yeah. price it a little higher then we're gonna bring it back down to what we really want what we really want kind of thing so i mean that's one tactic there's a ton of them but it, it just so you understand we're not insane we understand that we see price drops too every okay day. so <laughs> But maybe things are, are set to change. Zillow recently revised its home price forecast upwards, but it only sees home values rising 1.9% this year. Previously, it's expected home prices to increase by 0.9, Zillow called it. Slower than the long-term norms, but welcome slowdown for first-time buyers compared to rapid appreciation seen over the pandemic. In the report published earlier this week, still before the pandemic, it was normal for prices to appreciate around 5 to 6% each year, Redfin chief economist recently noted. So, yes, I welcome uh, the slowdown. Yeah. You know, because I'll tell you why I welcome it. I'm not selling my house. Mm -hmm. Okay. And a lot of people aren't selling their house. Right. Okay. But people don't think of this. If values drop, technically, will they do it? Probably not. They should lower your property taxes because the evaluation is dropping. <laughs> you know, a lot of places are going to say, hey, so what do you guys think? If your township or your county where you guys are and say your value does drop $150,000 and you're not planning to sell. So, again, you don't lose money until you sell the house. I right. always said that from the beginning. Do you think that your county or your town or wherever it's taxing you on the houses is going to drop the price on taxes? I don't see that happening. But, but it's interesting. But think about it. But technically, they can. I guess you could ask for a reassessment. You could ask for a reassessment saying, hey, my house is not worth. Like me, if they came <laughs> back and said, hey, Jimmy, your house is worth 100 grand now, I'd be like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Charge me taxes for a hundred grand. Right. You Makes know? sense. Yeah, that'd be interesting to see. All right, you continue. So, it's not the first time Zillow's changed its home price forecast for the year, and probably won't be the last. But its reasoning has to do with new for sale listings and mortgage rates. Quote. With interest rates still elevated, the modest upward revision is mostly the result of a slowdown in growth of new for sale listings, Zillow said. After raising, uh, after ri raising at an annual pace of 21% in February for the year over year increase in new listings eased in March to just 4%, including that the market remains quiet, quite tight for the would be home buyer. What do you think? That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, it does make sense. It, look, they're going to change. It's a forecast, right? We're going to yeah, everybody's going to change everything. It's the quarter. We hit the quarter of and, the year. And mortgages, as of right now, they're they're, they're, they're become right. And we've seen a slowdown. Uh, you know, we know that. Like yeah. title companies see the slowdown. We've seen the slowdown because the interest rates went back up again. So, you know, with the ten year going up uh, two weeks ago. And you know, technically, this should be the busy season for at least here in Florida here in Florida, right okay so we should be really really busy and slow down in July and August right. like a normal slowdown mm -hmm. but this should be our busy time and it just you know it's happening right now that slow, things are slowing down much sooner right you know we're in April I know it's it's a it's an odd slowdown this year for sure so you agree with that yeah basically. and I think they're gonna adjust it again I mean it's it's inevitable, you know, because the more data you have, the more you can kind of hone in on things. So we just went off of speculation for the year. Now we got a quarter under our belt and uh, we can start to look at some numbers. Okay, yesterday afternoon, well, we don't know when you're gonna see this video, so true. forget about yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell basically said interest rate cuts might not happen this year. Right, right now, given the strength of the labor market and progress on inflation so far, which is not doing going too well, Right. It's apparent that to allow restrictive policies further time to work. He said later that adding that depending on inflation, the Fed will remain the current interest rate levels as far as long as needed. So basically, and I said this in the previous video, yep. 
you know, everybody, you know, the, the stock market, and this is my opinion, you know, the stock market, everybody is, you know, pricing in two price cuts this year. You know, even the president said, oh, we're going to have price cuts by far the end of the year. It's going to delay a couple of months, but I don't believe any of that. I don't think, because if they cut the rates, they're saying, hey, we're in trouble. Mm-hmm. So we have to cut the rates because there's something down the road that you guys may not know about. Yeah, I don't see rates changing dramatically. I mean, now, mind you, the ups and downs is basing off the 10 year right now. They haven't increased rates, lower rates. It's just, we're, we're kind of just riding this big wave. I don't see us going backwards, not for a while. I've said that for a minute now. We, uh, I don't see it till, you know, maybe the third quarter. Yeah, it says- If we get one. That's not good news for the mortgage rates on really anyone who wants to buy a home. In October last year, mortgage rates reached more than a two decade high at 8.03%. For some time, they were falling, at one point dipping to 6.61. But in the past week or so, which is, which is true. Yeah, very much so. You know, because this, this uh, article is pretty new. Rates have been on the rise. The latest reading showed the average 30 year mortgage rate is at 75 the highest all year. Actually, I think it's today, because it's this is a few days old, I think it's even higher now. I think so. So I think, I always said that mortgages, <clears throat> is psychological, okay? So if if rates hit 5%, mm -hmm. all hell break loose, and right. prices of houses will go skyrocketing, everybody's gonna be rushing to buy. The people that are saying, hey, we're waiting for 3%, realize that they're like five, yeah, six percent. I think if rates hit six percent for a thirty-year, I think it'll give real estate a big hit in the arm, and I think a lot of buyers are going to come out. Yeah, and listings will come up and things like that too, because six percent is closer to the normal. Right, but when you're hitting that eight percent, or when you hit that nine, or let's say, because I remember, you know back in the day i remember my first house you know 10 11 12. yep and i remember my, my first mortgage too it was like oh i got 10.5 percent. i was excited for 10.5 percent yeah. but and now we're not talking like 60s and 70s this is like yeah you know this is in the 80s 80s but you know listen this is what people are going to say in this video my house was one hundred twenty thousand dollars. of course it wasn't seven hundred thousand yeah so but gas was you know everything was less expensive back then so were your wages right and your way the wage is low so 10 you know 10.5 percent on a hundred thousand dollar mortgage is, right. is a lot better than 10.5 percent on a five hundred thousand dollar absolutely even with today's <laughs> wages yeah it's still a lot you know because i put it into perspective of when i bought my first house and i was at like nine and change almost 10 percent interest that was you know god late 90s and I was working at the fire department at the time, so I know what my salary was, and that was difficult, but I was like, okay, this is pretty normal for us for that little peak back then, first time buyer and all that. You know, and then we kind of cycle around now. If I was at the fire department still, even though I'm retired, it would be, you know, tough at four, five, six hundred thousand dollar house at yeah. eight percent, nine percent, it'd be crazy. Persistent inflation has diminished any optimism that the Federal Reserve may start to cut rates in June, meaning mortgage rates seem more and more likely to remain higher for longer this year. First America's chief economist Mark Fleming said in an analysis accompanying its home price index. I agree. I agree. I too. just don't see it happening. The Fed's not going to undo what they've been attempting to do. And like you said, you hit the nail on the head with what you said earlier. Yeah, no one knows what will happen with mortgage rates or new listings, but we know the lock-in effect is real. So as long as mortgage rates are higher than what people are used to, homeowners will choose not to sell. Many sellers will remain on strike, keeping a lid on supply, Fleming said. It was true, that's what I was just saying. Right, yeah, it's all kind of tying into what we've already said. Um, for its part, Zillow said, it remains to be seen how new listings will fare in April, the Easter holiday falling in March, and the fact that the, at, that February was a leap year are likely clouding the broader picture. Nevertheless, last year, existing home sales fell to their lowest point in almost 30 years, and Zillow seems to expect them to fall further this year. Yeah. 
Zillow forecast now calls for 4.6 million existing home sales in 2024, slightly below both 2023's level of 4.09 million and the previous forecast of 4.1 million existing home sales uh, this year. It said despite February's better than expected sales. So, what, what's your opinion? It just basically all they're saying right there to cut to the chase of that is it's it's all these little numbers, but it just means that we're going to do the same thing that we did last year. Yeah. And what I did is I picked another article that had nothing to do with this one. And we're going to go over that one too, because you're going to see like people's opinions, how different okay. changes. Okay. This article says the average U.S. home price will spike 20% to a record 500,000 if the feds cut interest rates too soon, experts say. We were just saying that, but see, like, because nobody knows the future. Right. Okay, the medium home price could surpass 500,000 for the first time, one expert said. Um, Bill, I won't what his name, said price could jump 20% if the feds cut the cut crushing inflation. So they're saying if they get the inflation down to whatever the goal is, 2%, that, you know, it's going to raise prices of homes. But I think that if interest rates go up, and there's going to be a big demand for housing, I think inflation will go up. Right. But go ahead. We're stuck between a rock and a hard place. The average price of a home could soar over 500 if the Federal Reserve cuts rates without uh, crushing inflation first. They say, okay, this is kind of uh, repeating what we just talked about. Uh, the median U.S. home price has surged over a third within the past five years from 313,000 in 2019 to 418. Uh, thousand last quarter st louis fed data shows 20 percent increase would raise it to a record of five hundred and one thousand dollars isn't that crazy that is insane pulte is the ceo of the pulte capital of pulte capital a private equity firm that invests in building products companies and his grandfather founded pulte group a home building giant yeah, he explained that aspiring homeowners could face a two-pronged problem, the rising cost of housing and the increased demand for homes if the Fed proceeds with cutting rates before inflation comes down. So basically, we won't even continue with this article because... It's starting to kind of... It's, it's, everybody's going to say the same thing, okay? If rates get cut inflation too soon, inflation's going to go up. Right. Okay? If rates drop to 6% or say five percent all hell's gonna break loose that would be an insanely fast drop like i mean if we went from eight to five well do you remember when the economy was in trouble and they kept cutting rates we went down to zero right you know and some countries did a negative rate <laughs> right <laughs> so you know they're going to and right now you know the way the, the government's spending money like it's nothing you know yeah so I think at the end, you know, that's going to come calling too, you know, so there's going to, something's going to have to happen because they have to pay interest on right. the debt and the debt is increasing like crazy. But I think that at the end of the day, if we only have a 0% growth in values or a 0 0.2 or 0.9, 1%, right. I'll be happy since I'm not selling mm -hmm. if there was a 10 percent drop in values i'm okay with it 20 like we always said you're not going to lose money until you sell right and nobody nobody can predict but i the one thing i'm predicting is rates aren't going to be cut this year this is going to be status quo and this is the good sign of this for me is we are supposed to be in the busy busy season yep and home inspections are slowing down to be honest with you yep title slowing down everybody's slowing down and my realtors are saying it's slowing down but the saving grace in florida is insurance is a constant so we're crazy doing insurance right. inspections. inspections tell us what you guys think uh, about this do you have anything to add to this no i mean we, we pretty much beat this one up pretty good so yeah you know, till next time do me a favor, consider subscribing. It's very motivational for us. It's greatly appreciated, and we will talk to you in the next one. Talk to you soon. See you next one. Thanks. Bye.